In order to play Ninja Gaiden correctly, then you will need to understand movement. One key thing that you'll find with new players once they start playing Ninja Gaiden for the first time is that they run around everywhere. Now normally there would be nothing wrong with this, but with Ninja Gaiden, with enemies everywhere, with the game being extremely difficult, it's important to keep on your toes. With well-versed Ninja Gaiden players, there's a specific movement pattern that we use to get from point A to point B. Whilst not exactly the safest option, it's the one that is most often used by many well-versed Ninja Gaiden players. This method of movement is very, very simple. It is dodge roll, followed by a jump, dodge roll, jump, rinse and repeat. This is the method of movement which is used universally by experienced Ninja Gaiden players. And normally this will be the most often used method for many different kinds of situations, whether it be traveling towards enemies, retreating, dodging certain projectiles or attacks, and so forth. Now you can't exactly mash when performing this pattern. There is a certain timing to it, but it's not strict. By running around normally, you are kept open and vulnerable to enemy attacks. So this technique of movement is the one that you'll end up using most or end up relying on the most when playing Ninja Guide. In order to survive in Ninja Gaiden, you need a good defense. By holding down the block button, your character will raise their weapon, assuming a guarding stance. In this stance, you can block many different kinds of attacks. However, there are some attacks from enemies that will break your guard. There are attacks that will simply break your guard. There's attacks that will break your guard while dealing chip damage. And there's certain attacks that will completely tear through your guard and deal no more damage to you. These are known as unblockable attacks. With these kinds of attacks, your best option is to avoid them altogether. By holding down the block button and inputting a direction, your character will perform a dodge movement in that direction. The dodge movement itself has invincibility frames, meaning that your character will be able to avoid damage from any kind of attack if timed correctly. Even if the attack makes direct contact with your character. The key to survival in Ninja Gaiden is knowing when to block, knowing when to dodge and understanding how to take advantage of these invincibility frames. One of the defensive options that you have once your guard is broken is the ability to regard so that the moment your guard is broken you can immediately start guarding against attacks once again. Regard simply by holding down the block button immediately after your guard is broken. If done successfully, your character will start blocking enemy attacks once again, even though your guard has just been broken. When your guard is broken, you still have the ability to evade. By holding down the block button and inputting a direction even after your guard has been broken will allow you to evade attacks. This technique is called Furious Wind. It's important to be mindful when using Furious Wind and to be aware of enemy attacks. Some enemies may try to follow up after breaking your guard, meaning that you'll need to time Furious Wind in time of their attacks to gain maximum effectiveness and then be able to counter attack. Furious Wind also has invincibility frames, so time it correctly and you'll be able to avoid damage from any kind of attack. In the game, you have two types of jump. 
you have a regular jump which is done by pressing the jump button. With this jump you can jump in place by keeping the analog stick in a neutral position or you can jump in any direction by moving the analog stick in the desired direction and pressing jump. The second type of jump is a homing jump. This is performed by pressing the light attack button and the jump button at the same time. This homing jump will cause your character to jump towards the closest enemy if the analog stick is kept in a neutral position. Although when facing a single enemy, no matter the direction you point the left analog stick towards, this homing jump will still cause you to jump towards the closest enemy. If you are surrounded by enemies and have the analog stick facing a certain direction, then this homing jump will cause you to jump towards the closest enemy in that same direction. This special homing jump is called wind run. You'll know when you have performed wind run correctly because there is a shock wave that emits from your character's feet the moment they take off into the air. Wind run has many uses, some of which involve creating setups as well as making other techniques much easier to use. Wind path is the ability to jump off of enemies. Perform wind path simply by starting off with a wind run which allows you to jump towards the closest enemy. Thereafter, once your character is over the head of your target, press the jump button. This will cause your character to jump off of the enemy and place yourself behind them. Wind path is an extremely useful technique. It's great for positioning. Once you perform wind path, it gives you a strategic advantage against the enemy that you wind path off of because their back will be facing you. In most cases, the enemy that you wind path off of will be stunned for a short duration. And one of the biggest benefits is that wind path has invincibility frames. The guillotine throw is a special technique which allows you to throw the enemy in the same direction in which you jump towards them. To perform a guillotine throw, start off with a wind run. Once above the enemy's head, input both the light attack button and the jump button at the same time just as you do to perform the wind run. This will cause you to grab them and throw the enemy in the same direction in which you jump towards them with. The guillotine throw is great for positioning the enemies where you want them to be. It also has certain uses against certain enemies. Another major benefit of the guillotine throw is that it also has invincibility frames. The Izuna drop is a powerful technique which can be performed in mid-air. Only some weapons are able to perform the Izuna drop so you'll have to look at the techniques menu to know which weapon has the ability to perform the Izuna drop. The Izuna drop is a great technique if there is damage incoming while you're in mid-air as this technique has invincibility frames. If surrounded by multiple enemies, the Izuna drop can be one of the best ways to take them out efficiently and also with style. The Izuna drop can only be performed on certain enemies that can be juggled in mid-air. If surrounded by multiple enemies in the immediate vicinity, the Izuna drop on landing releases a powerful shockwave which damages all nearby enemies. The ultimate technique is one of the most useful and most powerful tools in your arsenal. To perform the ultimate technique, hold down the heavy attack button. Your character will enter a stance and begin charging up. Your weapon will begin to glow, and once charged long enough, your character will begin to have an aura surrounding them. There are two levels of ultimate technique. 
There is the ultimate technique where your character is surrounded by a blue aura. This ultimate technique is known as an ET or level 1 ultimate technique. Then there is the level 2 ultimate technique, the most powerful ultimate technique. This is performed once your character has an orange aura surrounding them. Ultimate techniques are extremely powerful. Some ultimate techniques are more suited to different kinds of situations compared to others. Along with the high damage output gained from the ultimate technique, this technique has invincibility frames throughout the entire duration of the ultimate technique. It's important to know that enemies killed by the ultimate technique will always drop yellow essence. Enemies killed by the ultimate technique drop bigger quantities of yellow essence, making its usage a great way to earn money very quickly. Sometimes charging an ultimate technique may not be the most suitable method in battle. Luckily, there is a method in which you are able to charge ultimate techniques much more quickly using a technique called ultimate guidance. By holding down the heavy attack button and charging up your ultimate technique, if there is any wandering essence, they will instantly become absorbed, charging your ultimate technique level. Depending on the essence, the amount of charge varies. Yellow Essence increases ultimate technique charge instantly by one level. Blue Essence and Red Essence increases ultimate technique charge to the max. When absorbing any essence around you for the ultimate technique, it will negate the effect of the essence. Meaning that Yellow Essence will lose their money value. Blue Essence will lose their health restoration value and Red Essence will lose its key charging value. So be mindful of the essence around you when utilizing Ultimate Guidance. What you'll find with the Ultimate Technique is that even when charging for the Ultimate Technique by means via using ultimate guidance there is still a bit of delay before actually being able to absorb the essence around you and charging for the ultimate technique however there is a way to bypass this also by jumping and holding the heavy attack button just as you land this causes you to cancel out the startup animation when charging for the ultimate technique during the startup animation, your character does not absorb any essence for the ultimate technique. But by cancelling out this startup animation, your character will instantly absorb the essence around you, causing you to charge up your ultimate technique instantly. This is the on landing UT or ultimate technique. And this is the technique that makes ultimate technique usage possible in combos. The on landing ultimate technique can be performed from any kind of aerial movement, meaning it can be performed from jumping normally, from jumping in a direction, from jumping while also using projectile weaponry, from wind path, wind run, also when jumping off of walls. Walls serve a huge purpose in Ninja Gaiden. Unlike other games where you would do your best to stay away from walls as they would interfere with your gameplay experience, walls in Ninja Gaiden serve a huge purpose and are an invaluable tool to help you enhance your combat capabilities. There are three states that your character can enter when interacting with the wall. 
there are wall clings which can be performed by jumping directly towards the wall and on contact with the wall you leave the analog stick in a neutral position you will see your character clinging to the wall in place before coming back down the second state are wall runs by jumping towards the wall and keeping the left analog stick pushed in the direction in which you hit the wall your character will perform a wall run in that direction wall runs can either be performed horizontally or vertically the third and final state when interacting with a wall are wall jumps these can be performed either from wall clings or from a vertical wall run this type of wall jump is known as a bird flip where your character will face on the wall will depend on the direction in which you hit the wall with from these states there are certain attacks that can be performed you would want to experiment the different kinds of attack options that can be performed when using the walls especially since wall attacks in ninja gaiden all have invincibility frames so they can serve as a fantastic offensive option as well as a great defensive option the flying swallow is a very useful technique to close the distance between you and your opponent to perform the flying swallow start by performing a winged run and then once your character reaches the peak of their jump input the heavy attack button not every weapon can perform the flying swallow so checking the techniques list for every weapon is important flying swallow can also be performed on walls there is a certain distance limit required for the flying swallow if you were to exceed that distance then the flying swallow cannot be performed the flying solar has invincibility frames so if an enemy is charging towards you or you see an incoming projectile from an enemy and that enemy is within range then the flying solar can be one of the best options to avoid damage as well as inflict damage the flying solo has a degree of recovery after its usage so be mindful of the situation when performing flying swallow shuriken cancelling is one of the most useful techniques in ninja gaiden in the game the attacks all have recovery animations during this recovery period you are unable to move or perform any other kinds of follow-up attacks until the recovery animations have completely played out but for some weapons these recovery animations can be cancelled by throwing a shuriken this will allow you to continue your flurry of attacks as well as give you the freedom to move around the battlefield more quickly shuriken cancelling is also great for crowd control as you are focusing on your primary target and need to shuriken cancel you can throw a shuriken towards a secondary target and then after you can continue your assault on your primary target the weapons that are most susceptible to shuriken cancelling are the single katana weapons and the dual katanas so if you want to be able to connect multiple movements together in quick succession then shuriken cancelling is the skill that you will need to develop If the enemy attempts to attack you while your guard is up, you have the ability to counter attack. Counter attack simply by pressing either the light attack button or the heavy attack button the moment an enemy tries to strike against you with your guard up. Some counters have different effects on the enemy depending on the counter attack you choose to perform as well as the weapon you perform the counter attack with every single weapon has two counter attacks one performed with the light attack button 
and the other performed with the heavy attack button. You can pretty much mash any attack button while having your guard up and still be able to successfully counter any regular attack. However, unblockable attacks cannot be countered. Counter attacks also have invincibility frames. Ninpo is a special ability in the game which allows you to cast magic against your enemies. Activate Ninpo by pressing the heavy attack button and the projectile button at the same time. Some Ninpo are more suited to different kinds of situations compared to others. Ninpo has invincibility frames, so if you ever see yourself about to receive damage, then perhaps activating Ninpo can be the best way to save your character. Red Essence restores Ninpo, and Ninpo can only be activated on the ground. And there are many different kinds of weapons that you will be able to take control of in Ninja Gaiden. From single katanas, dual katanas, great swords, nunchucks, a staff, and more. Every single weapon has its specialized moment. The most versatile weapon is the dragon sword. So this is the weapon that you will be relying on the most throughout Ninja Gaiden. It has a great balance between speed as well as damage output. Also, it is the weapon that has most of its attacks prone to shuriken cancelling. The weapon that comes as a close second is the dual katana, the dragon's claw and tiger's fang. The dragon sword as well as the dual katana also have the biggest move lists in the game. The other weapons are not nearly as developed as the dragon sword and dual katana. Some weapons focus solely on power then you have other weapons such as the Vigorian Flail, which is fast and powerful, but lacks the versatility that the Dragon Sword and Dual Katana have. Some weapons also work better against certain enemies. Just like melee weapons, there are a range of projectile weapons to use in the game. A lot of these projectile weapons will have their specialized uses also. The most often used will be the shuriken. While they are weak, they are used for shuriken cancelling and have an infinite amount. They can also be used to juggle certain light enemies in the air. Many projectile weapons when used on the ground take longer for them to be fired, so a more viable faster and safer option would be to use them in mid-air. The usage of projectile weaponry in Ninja Gaiden is very flexible. They can be used while standing, while moving, while jumping, while running, while wall running, while wall jumping, during wall clings, mid-air combos, even after a wind path. In the game, when you attack and are currently going through that recovery animation period, you still have the ability to block attacks. It's important to make sure that the guard button is always held down, even during these movements. So despite the fact that it may look as if your guard is not up, you still have the ability to quickly raise your guard and block attacks the moment they occur. This is what I call the recovery guard. So every time you do see an attack coming, input the block button as quickly as you can. You may just be lucky enough to be able to block it in time, even if your guard appears to be down. When enemies are defeated in the game, they leave behind this floating orb. This floating orb is known as essence. Essence comes in three types, Yellow Essence, Blue Essence, and Red Essence. Yellow Essence is a form of currency. Blue Essence is the essence used to restore your health, 
and red essence is the essence to restore your key. The quantity of the essence depends on the size of the essence, meaning that yellow essence has more value if the essence is bigger. Blue essence restores more health if the essence is bigger. Some enemies are prone to dropping a certain type of essence, such as the red fiend enemies when killed they normally drop blue essence. There is also ways to force a certain type of essence from an enemy. By killing enemies with the ultimate technique the enemies will always drop yellow essence, no matter the type of enemy even if they are prone to dropping different types of essence like blues or reds. Enemies killed with Nimpo are also more prone to drop either blue or red essence. Blue essence also comes from enemies more frequently if your health is low. So one tactic or method to use if your health is low is to kill multiple enemies at the same time without actually absorbing any essence. This way, the enemies killed will be more likely to drop blue essence, so you can restore greater amounts of health while your health is low. This is a great way to manipulate the essence drop. For example, if you want to start chaining multiple ultimate techniques together, then lowering your health to a certain value and causing enemies to drop blue essence will allow you to chain multiple maximum level ultimate techniques together. This is a risk reward system in the game and it's something to take advantage of. Essence dragging is the ability to draw any wandering essence towards you. By holding down the heavy attack button as you would charge for your ultimate technique, essence becomes drawn towards your character. If you were to release the heavy attack button just before the essence becomes absorbed, they all remain in close proximity, allowing you to collect them normally. This technique is useful if there are any wandering essence which are just out of reach, or if there is any essence too far away and would disappear if you would try to collect them normally. There are three levels of essence dragging. The first level is to draw all the essence around your character that they remain close to your character but not collected. The second level of essence dragging is when the essence around your character is drawn in and is collected without actually charging your ultimate technique. The final level of essence dragging is when the essence is drawn towards you, collected and at the same time you release the heavy attack button at such a precise moment that you are able to both collect the essence as well as use whatever necessary essence is needed to charge your ultimate technique level. By holding down the block button when you are surrounded by essence will cause the essence to not be absorbed. If you were to release the block button for a split second and then re-block straight after, you will absorb an orb of essence which is closest to your character and leave the other essence unaffected. This is a technique that I call essence picking. Essence picking is extremely useful. For instance, if you want to start charging multiple ultimate techniques one after another, and there's certain essence that you need to absorb, whether there are health essence, if you are low on health, or key essence that you want to absorb or you are surrounded by massive value yellow essence. Using this technique will allow you to absorb the essence that you want and then leave the rest behind to be utilized for an ultimate technique. Since you only need two yellow essence regardless of 
the value, it would make sense to absorb the highest value yellow essence and to use the lower value yellow essence to be absorbed for ultimate techniques.